What defines a supercar? A high top speed? Certainly. Exclusivity? Definitely. A seven-digit price tag? Absolutely. But what really defines a supercar is a combination of an enthralling drive and outright desirability. Nine years ago, Audi took the world by surprise by joining the Supercar Club with a first-generation and quite brilliant Audi R8. The big question is whether the new second-generation version can build on that foundation. Way back in 2007, Audi wanted to create a benchmark sports car that was high-tech, exciting and desirable. That first-generation R8 did the trick. Sure, there were those who argued that the R8 was too soft and not dramatic enough, that it lacked the aura and the heritage of a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. But that didn't prevent 27,000 buyers from opting for the Audi. And anyone who drove the R8 knew it was something special. Which brings us to a cold winter's morning in Johannesburg and a brand new take on the Audi R8 theme. This is the second generation R8 and it features a brand new platform, a lighter body and keener, sharper looks. It does doff a hat to the original R8, but it makes the old car look like a tabby cat next to a tiger. The basic silhouette remains recognizable, but the new R8 looks trimmer, keener, angrier. The lines are crisper, the contour is more angular. The fighter bomber that was the original R8 has become a faster, meaner, tactical interceptor. Of course it has all the usual Audi styling stuff. The hungry single frame grille, the piercing stare of the LED headlights and the rounded roofline. But most importantly, this shape has been optimized for wind cheating aerodynamics. At the rear, a massive diffuser coaxes the air from underneath the car, while the fixed rear wing delivers 100 kilos of downforce at speed. Huge 20-inch wheels fill the sculpted wheel arches. This Audi R8 V10 Plus is powered by a 5.2-litre normally aspirated V10 engine rated at 449 kilowatts of maximum power and 560 newton meters of torque. And it's quite an anachronism because these days, of course, most sports car makers have gone for turbocharged engines. The gearbox is a 7-speed S-Tronic dual clutch and the Quattro four-wheel drive system is brand new and has been developed specifically for this car. The underpinnings employ a bonded mix of aluminium and carbon fiber reinforced plastic to reduce weight and improve torsional rigidity. Wishbones all round are coupled to gas full dampers with active suspension and option. To tame the RX considerable urge, carbon fiber ceramic disc brakes are standard fare. High tech is also the overriding theme of the two seater cockpit. A thick rim steering wheel frames the virtual cockpit, which comprises a high res display with configurable instruments, and there are lots of carbon fiber accents as well as these special lightweight bucket seats. But the cabin is also much more luxurious than expected. The steering wheel is worth a closer look. Besides the usual multifunction controls, it comes fitted with four dedicated controls for engine start-stop, drive mode selection, performance mode adjustment, and even an exhaust note selector. The multimedia interface controller in the center console is familiar Audi fare, as is the tactile quality, ergonomic excellence, and the close attention to fine detail. As a result, the cockpit feels bespoke and exclusive. Not that any of that matters once you've dropped in behind the wheel and hit the start button. The V10 is vocal to say the least, even on startup, the growl becomes raw, becomes scream as you chase the needle towards the red. It's a sound that makes your heart beat faster. The previous R8 was extremely user friendly and this R8 is no different. The S-Tronic dual clutch gearbox swaps cogs instantly and incisively, especially in dynamic mode, and the engine revs with the resolute smoothness of a turbine. The steering feels tidy and nicely weighted even at low speeds, but gets better and better as the speed increases, showing off a real sense of heft and feedback that is rare for electromechanical designs. Audi puts a lot of emphasis on the motorsport heritage of the new R8, and so it's quite fitting that we're driving this brand new car on an equally brand new and revamped Kailami Grand Prix circuit. It's a sports car match made in heaven. Absolutely smooth, pristine tar, a brilliant layout, and of course, not another car in sight. What more could you ask for? The R8's performance stats are impressive. It makes short work of the 0 to 100 dash, stopping the clocks at just 3.2 seconds and nipping past 200 kilometers an hour in around 9 seconds. Top speed is 330 kilometers an hour if you can find a road that's long and empty enough to keep the throttle buried. 
But straight line speed is only one of the strings in this car's performance bow. In fact, it's more about the feel, the handling and the response of the car. There's huge lashings of power if you give it stick. It, V10 engine is linear and fast and quite different from the turbo engines we've got used to. And the handling is absolutely crisp, spot on and very, very responsive. This is a real driver's car. What's less apparent when you're thrashing the R8 around a track like Kyle Army is how docile and easy the car is when driving normally. Yes, it's wide and rear vision is restricted, but with a driving mode set to comfort and the cruise control engaged, the R8 becomes a competent long-distance cruiser. Although the torch chassis will keep you appraised of every dip and bump along the way. And the biggest problem you'll have in and around town is keeping the crowds at bay in the parking lot. This new generation Audi R8 improves on its predecessor in absolutely every respect. The chassis is tauter, the styling is keener, and the engine produces more power. The interior has gone from old school to cutting edge, and in fact, this car is the most powerful production car ever produced by Audi. Best of all though, at a price of just under 3 million rand before options, this is actually a supercar bargain. Buy a Lamborghini or a Ferrari with similar power and you'll spend up to 2 million rand more. An eager revving 5.2 litre V10 sounds great and goes even better despite losing power at altitude. The dual clutch gearbox offers rapid shifts and the chassis is taut and responsive. Despite lots of race car tech, the interior is easy to access, comfortable and well equipped, encouraging daily use. At around 3 million rand it offers good value too, even if its Lamborghini Huracan cousin is sexier.